Look, listen. I ain't no way around it, right? But just listen. Just hear me for a minute. Just listen for a minute. All right? Just listen. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Random Thoughts and Ideas with Jack. I am your guy, Jack. And this is a podcast about just random thoughts and ideas about everything and everyday life. Concepts, mental health, uh, relationships, whether it be a romantic or family. And it also a place to get some life-saving or money-saving DIY tips. So I want to encourage you guys to like, subscribe, and even comment. Comment on any thoughts, any ideas that you um, might have heard, like, or dislike. Any tips, any questions you might have, just shoot them in the comments. Remember, you can find me on all of my handles. Um, you go to my anchor page, you can find it. Um, my handles on YouTube, Instagram, R R T I with Jack. So listen up, listen in, and enjoy. Okay, guys, I am back. Welcome back to RT with Jack. So at first, I need to apologize to you guys. I'm making a post last week. Um, I had the flu, and then right afterwards, I got COVID, which was an interesting thing. I can talk about that as well. And then it was my birthday. Um, so I really couldn't do much because it was still in isolation. Um, but it was it was interesting. I did get to do what I usually like to do, which is that meditate a bit. So we're going to talk about that. I also want to talk about a massive elephant in the room. Um, what happened at the awards over the weekend um, with Chris Rock and Bill Smith. Um, we want to look at it from a very different point of view that a lot of people are not speaking about. You know me. They always like to be different and look at things differently. Okay, so let's talk about me being sick. Um, um, I went to sleep in St. Thomas, which is pretty cool where I live. I went to sleep with the window open. They woke up with a head cold or congested headache. I ate. Um, so I did the normal oating remedies. It was okay. I went for precaution to get a PCR test. Sorry, a antigen test. And the antigen test came back negative. So it was good on high ceilings. And then it got better. Then it started a few worse. And then it got a uh, PCR test afterwards um, when I got better and it said it was positive um, so they also did a few antigen tests um, some were negative some were positive um, but there is I was told that I don't have enough viral load viral load to, to spread it but it's still isolated as per requirements and auto abundance of caution um, so that happened just before my birthday was the 24th of March so I was in isolation for all of that um, so then they came out of isolation on the Friday and so I celebrated my birthday on the Sunday so it was a very interesting thing it was not um, I, I never got tested to find out which variant it was or it was not or rather was which variant it was but by the symptoms and the mild symptoms I had it suggested I had Omicron um, all I had was um, headaches headaches and a running nose a rather feeling congested not really a running nose running nose a little bit of mucus in there but not very much um, I did a lot of inhalations I boiled water put in a basin and added like menthol crystals or picks almost oils and they do that every morning religiously um, they dry um, vitamin C every morning as well and I checked myself so it was it was not a bad experience um, I guess the timing was just horrible um, but I didn't have any fever I didn't have chills um, it wasn't it was just like a just like a bad head um, the most annoying thing was the congestion because it felt congested even though it was doing the inhalations and smelling um, you know, the inhalers there was no mucus um, coming down so that was just really annoying um, 
feeling in the world a lot because of the um, congested feeling. But apart from that, that was that was basically worse of it. Um, the headaches and aches were mild once it took the painkillers. Um, it was okay. I was not given any medication, so it was self medicating. But I used normal things like Panadol, Estrogen. That was about it. That was the only thing I took. Um, I also tried to boost my immune system some more. I usually use a lot of garlic and um, cinnamon, so uh, and ginger. So I use garlic, ginger, a little bit more. Even turmeric, a little bit more. I like to put with turmeric and ginger and stuff. So usually uh, we always do. So it's not a big issue. That. So yes, I celebrated my 38th birthday on the 24th of March, 2022. Yes, two years shy of the big 4-0. I don't even know how to, how to feel about it. I feel old, but or rather I think I'm old, but I don't feel old. So, as I said before in previous podcasts, around my birthday is, is when I really take the time to just reflect on how my year went, how the five years went. Um, I plan for the next year and I plan for the next five years. I did meditation too because um, I, um, if you listen to my previous episode about my working diagnosis of NMOSD, I was kind of nervous or rather uneasy um, of having COVID and um, to kill my mind thinking that I might have a relapse. Or I have another episode brought on as a result of that. But thank God that didn't happen. Has it happened yet? I don't know would. But really good happening. So yeah, I, I think um, the past five years has been a big high and low for me. Um, between 2017 uh, or the year of 2017 was a pretty good year for me. All the way up to mid 2018. But previous to that, I was having yeah challenges at work and whatever. But I was being very successful in all the projects. Um, and then I had one or two spots of some issues, and then started to come back again. Highs and lows. Um, for me, I think overall, the past five years was pretty fair you know, um, I can't say it was all bad I can't say it was all good I think it was pretty balanced so looking forward now I just need to re- I reevaluated rather uh, my concepts of life it did change um, because a lot of things happened to me especially my medical issue or issues so I really look at life a lot differently um, I, I don't let a lot of things bother me I don't let a lot of people it's my, my mood and my feeling. It took me a long time to get here, but I can honestly say I am working in progress. Um, I won't. I don't want to say I am here. I've, I what I would say that things that would bother me before definitely don't bother me now, or things that I will let bother me before definitely don't bother me now. I won't say that there, there's nothing that will happen that would bother me. I'm not going to throw that out there because I don't want to attract that negative energy. But I think that I have grown a lot a whole lot and that's great any growth is good looking at the next five years I might have a few short goal, short term goals and long term goals and I have not share the um, detail but I would say that um, I see some big changes coming some massive changes in terms of careers maybe massive changes in terms of Geographical locations, maybe. Um, remember, you saying about five year plan. But don't necessarily mean next year or at, at least at the end of five years, maybe. I think they are. 
things I really want to do. I, I've always wanted to start my own business, so I plan to do that. Consultancy, I plan to do that in very short term. And I really want to start really making some, some strides. You know, I, I've heard people say life starts at 40. So, <laughs> to see if that is true. Hopefully, it's starting at 38. So I want to say that this episode is not going to be long. It's going to be nice and short. An hour, probably going to give you a half hour at most. But I don't think that you want to give you a long one today. Just give me a short break. Just to hear my voice again. I do really want to continue to thank all of my listeners from all over the world. And it's been great talking to you. It's been great I'm creating content for you. Sharing how my different views on the whole life and things that happen. And also, this is going to be the penultimate episode. I'm going to do one more after this. And then I'm going to call it a wrap of the season. And then um, start a new season. I'm not sure when I'm going to start it, but I'm going to start doing the episodes long before. So when they do start, I just need to press punch and go. Do a lot more DIYs. We're doing some DA ways in terms of doing a service, um, which deals, as I spoke about before, changing oil, changing oil filters, changing the smart plugs, checking the brakes, checking the fluid levels, that sort of stuff. Um, I'm also going to do some suspension DA ways, look at uh, car suspension and the different components and the parts of it. So we hear a strange noise, you know, not to panic, um, not to ignore them as well. A few things like that going on in season two. I, I really do want to get a bit more into the outreach aspect of it as well. I have a few people uh, doing podcasts that want to do a few connections. I want to thank you guys for listening to the last episode. With the 20 years after Cuba, there's some very nice professional people who share the experience of studying in Cuba. Hopefully, you might see one or two more of those coming up as well. I also want to take the time to big up the Treaty Camp, um, Lana Henry, who's doing some great job, some great jobs with her um, organization and with her podcast. She's also an excellent Spanish teacher as well. She's actually doing uh, some Spanish classes now. I saw them for free. So check her out on her IG. Tree T Camp. That's Tree Number T C A A. Who is M P T Camp? You can check that out. If you look at the last episode as well, you'll also see the link to her um, platforms or social media handles. And you can take a look at her videos. They're very entertaining. They're very knowledgeable. They're very inspiring. Very inspiring person. So big up again to Treaty Camp. I also want to add a very good friend that approached me about doing a logo. And talks about a few ideas. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention his name. But I'm going to say his first name is Sharon. Thank you very much, brother. I, I really do, do love the samples you sent me. They are very, very good. Um, whenever you get that final um, artwork up, I'm going to post it. Post all the links to you. If you want to, you can do a little video or a discussion about it. But talented, talented, brother. Talented, very talented. All right. So, same to talk about Bill Smith and Chris Rock. From my point of view. And so before getting any details, I want, I want to say this thing. I grew up um, watching both um, artists. Uh, I remember even before before um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he was doing music, he was doing stand-up comedy. Uh, and then also everybody knows Chris Rock here. All of the greats I stuck with Chris Rock burning my all those stuff. So I think um, Chris Rock is one of the greatest comedians in this time. One of the most 
popular comedians. And and to be honest, Will Smith is is he's, I, I guess we can't call him a comedian anymore, but he has is well versed in art of comedy because he was the producer, executive producer and writer for Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, so in his own right. He is a comedian who transition transition into big screen motion pictures. And I also grew up um, in love. If anybody that was born in the 80s and was not in love with Jada Pinkett is a liar. Go down dirty shame. Uh, all the other Wayne's brothers uh, movies she was in, a lot of the other work she was in as well. Um, she was one of the examples of what Black and Beautiful was um, for me growing up. Um, Jada Pinkett Smith, it was Braxton, it was Gloria Savan. These were the icons of what beautiful people were. Now, I used to, I used to tune in on the Red Table Talk. I had to stop. The reason why I stopped is so funny that this happened. The reason why I stopped watching the Red Table Talk that I found it to be very skewed. It was not a balanced program, right? It was not as they keep pushing this idea of healing and that sort of stuff. I found that it was very biased, right? Um, egocentric even around Jada, her mother, the relationships, and the examples they wanted, set for below and all sort of stuff, right? It was very, I don't want to say feminine, but it was more um, feminine base. Um, it was it was all from that feminine point of view. It was not really that much masculine point of view. Yes, they had Don Chido on. Yes, there was there were talks with Will and stuff, but I found it to be very one sided. So I stopped. It wasn't it wasn't my thing at the point in time. So all that preamble aside, what happened? Um, in my point of view, and it, sh- a lot, it was shared with a lot of people, um, and it was not the only comedian or targeted set of jokes to people in the audience, or even the only person that, that used Jada in a joke. And there were other jokes that were made towards her that was a lot dirtier, or snazier, or of balance, or off color, like Chris J. James remarked. But hey, Now, in my point of view, I don't think that the joke was insensitive. If I grew up, I grew up and I watched J.A. Jane. It was an awesome movie. And there is some resemblance between her and um, the character, Demi Moore. Because of the haircut, well, I guess I understand alopecia is a immune system disorder. Um, but the same person was talking about how Oh, she was, and no one's gonna embarrass her or make her shame for it. So her reaction was was really out of place for me. But I think that Will's reaction was disproportionate disproportionate to the actual comment, especially when his initial reaction was a laugh. Um, I have heard people argue that it was an uncomfortable laugh, or it was this type of laugh, or that type of laugh. But I think his reaction and that's what it was a reaction was based on Jada's reaction or dissatisfaction with me. now I've heard I've heard he, or watched the interview based um, if he had the show about Batman protecting his way for well I don't see it as that I, don't, I really don't see it as that because that was not protection. There was no danger to her. There was no physical or emotional threat to her. And they say emotional boldly because it was not it was not focused on her sickness or illness. It was a general remark um, about a haircut. It wasn't nothing done in a snide or low act. My but the most disappointing thing about it is that what Will did 
was he took away something from Chris Rock. Dignity, respect. Right? He put him in an extremely uncomfortable situation where no man should ever put another man. Um, and one of the most disrespectful things you could do to a man is slap or spit in his face. And that was extremely disappointing. I, I still think that it was kind of a setup. The way how it happened was so um, no, not natural. The way how he went up on stage was a natural. The way how Chris like leaned forward when he came to him, and how he did not protect himself, protect himself whatsoever, and there was no real reaction. So that made me think that it was it was staged. The 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 what happened afterwards with with Bill's shouting out at the end is what gave it that feeling of not being staged. I would say that Will could have sat in his seat and said the same thing, this tasteful as it might have been, it would have been a lot more impactful than what he did. I will not even speak about winning the, the, the award or overshadowing the movie. Um, because in my mind, in 2016, he wanted to boycott them. So why even go in 2022, right? That was standard. But I think that that is a is a very very poor example for men, young men, any men to see as a as a form of protection. And the reason why you think that is because as a man you need to evaluate no matter how your partner feels, you need to evaluate your actions because at the end there you are the person that has to pay. You are the person that has to be held accountable those actions right um, and to get up and to physically abuse somebody or something as simple as that when early in the night people said much worse things um, about it about them or about her specifically Joe about um, him being an eligible bachelor because of the affair that was given which was very distasteful and it was a joke but the thing is the joke was not at her expense, the joke was at Will's expense. So then, should she have gotten up on stage and then done the same thing? So it doesn't seem right when the, when the tables are turned, right? I, I must say, I agree that Chris Rock, even if it was not staged, uh, his reaction or his inaction was extremely, extremely brave, extremely powerful. His restraint is something that a lot of people would not have shown. And I think even your, your natural instinct is to be self, um, to, to preserve yourself is survival. So the fact that he didn't even brace himself, the fact he didn't step back and put himself on guard, meant that he was extremely relaxed around the person. So the idea that there were tension, that there was tension between the two, um, that, that, does not, that was not displayed. Because if someone I had acrimony with or someone that I had issues with was to just randomly approach me, the first thing I would do is be defensive. I would put myself on guard. So when he his hand raised, I am going. Look, the other day, me and my friend was driving. I was driving. My friend was in the front seat. And she went back, taking something back. And I am relaxed around her. But for some reason, in my mind, I, I saw her hand. I feel like this woman hit me. But it was totally random, right? And it was, she was like, what the hell wrong you? Was like, I don't know, for some reason, that was my response. So that's somebody that's close to me. So I find it strange that the, the, the story or the idea that's being pushed, that there was a from 2016, is, is, is a whole water. Because if there was, he would have been on his guard from the first. The idea that he was so comfortable to, to laugh and say, he didn't even say Will. He said Richard as in the, the idea, the person that he played, right? In Richard. I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I think it was, it was very disproportionate to what happened. And so the point I was making is that you as a man have to be, you have to choose your battle. You have to be very cautious on what you're, on what you're doing, who you're doing it to, or where you're doing it. Because to be reactive as a man, has very serious consequences. A woman will have done something like that and it will blow over a lot easier, but it's different when a man is. And the idea that he was protecting is not a valid 
reason. Because it wasn't like if Chris Rock was in her face. It wasn't like if Chris Rock was in her um, three foot personal space, one foot personal space. He was he was meters away, right? The law that's premeditated. You get it from where you were. You go to watch someone to do something that's premeditated because you had enough time to think. Even if it was a random a, a random move, you get out, random new way across there. Every step you took to get there, you had time to think about it. And to walk also nonchalantly, you know, off your chest, and then to come back afterwards, what tears in your eyes, speaking about love and all sorts of things, and protecting blah blah blah. Act, give this but all these different people that were not important said the person that you disrespected the person that you stole their dignity temporarily from um, and believe it or not um, I am not even interested in watching Richard I mean I wasn't really interested in watching it before but I'm definitely not interested in watching it and, and I think there's, there's so much things about it I I I actually believe that Will Smith is going through so much that he is just reacting in his life. Um, for years, I've had the discussion that his his career, his acting career, is on the downward slope. Played some very poor choices in movies that he's done recently over the past probably ten years. Um, Gemini Man, the Moon, his son, a lot of them. There were some good ones in. I just think that Will is in a place where the environment is not encouraging for, for his growth and his mental health. That's what I get from the red the, the table talk, the red table talk discussion, um, and even the discussion about the entanglement that they had. I just found to be so uncomfortable. I mean, if a man was to say the same thing, I don't think he would have got off on away with it. It was just so uncomfortable. Um, and from my experience, when you are in real uncomfortable situations, you tend to do a lot of out of character, out of character things. And that's exactly what it was. It was an out of character response to something that could have been dealt with behind scenes. Something that's can be dealt with, even if, as I said before, if he sat in his chair and said what he said repeated it, it would have been a lot different, you know, but it would even be more impactful, the impact that he would have wanted, rather than the impact that he got, but now you got to worry about losing his Oscar, now you got to worry about being banned from the Oscar, um, I think too, I think too, that um, if it had been someone else, I don't think he would have had the same response. I had a conversation with a friend of mine and he's in the psychology and he said that he thinks it was a temporary moment of temporary insanity um, emotional based enraged insanity I know but I think if it was somebody like Rock um, 50 Cent um, even Chris Tucker or probably Kevin Hart I made a comic I don't think that the reaction would be the same I don't think the reaction would be the same. So whatever, whatever made him comfortable to do what he did, I don't think he would have done the same thing with him. And if you look at like the Golden Globes, where you got Ricky Gervais, that makes some very nasty slight jokes. If it was Ricky Gervais there, I don't think that he would have done the same thing either. Right? Because, you know, uh, white people ain't gonna take, ain't gonna take to that the same way. This idea that certain uh, Americans have, black Americans have, not to get the police involved was, was like a safety net because if, if Chris Rock did for the report, he still can. And Chris Rock sued Will Smith, he would be he would be richer than he already is. Because there's no way that Will Smith could win that case. The whole world, how much million people has watched that live? And the 10,000 memes come out within an hour. So the point I want to take away from this is that as men, right? Um, even and they know a lot of men get gaslit, or get pumped up by friends or or their partner. So you need to keep a level head. You need to think about the circumstances, and you need to think about the consequences of how you respond 
or react situations. And even if you want to use this term, defending the honor um, of your partner, which is, I think is very funny, very funny term because honor is a very subjective term. There's no real definition. Honor, feelings, respect, well, it all depends on who the person is or the concept is. But at the end of the day, you need to temper your reaction and it needs to be our action, our response. And it needs to be proportionate to the act. So, I didn't say if you're walking on the street with your girl, somebody slap your girl because she bought you don't do nothing. But I'm saying if you're walking on the street and his man sees that you're going to say, man, I'm going to say, your friend left you and come with me, that you can just take a baby and ring it in your mind because you feel disrespected or she feel disrespected. I got idiots in the world, you know? And you feel yourself before law courts, aggravated assault or something, premeditated because you do something off the hit spur of the moment, but you had enough time. The law does tell you you got enough time to th- you had enough time to think about it. As you walk towards the person, you had enough time to, to change your mind. Right? <laughs> uh-huh. So that's funny. I can wrap it up there, but I really want to wish you all guys a great week. Be safe, be good. Just remember that this life we have is ours. This life we have is short. So while you enjoying it, be good to keep it around you. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself first. Be true to yourself. Be real with yourself. And then doing that, you be true and real and fair to other people. Temper your response, your reactions. With level headedness and also let your reaction, action, or response be comparable or proportionate to what is before you. And do not get gaslighted or do not get amped up to do something that you can regret. Because at the end of the day, I mean, everybody gaslight you and hype you up to behave a certain way. At the end of the day, in them, I gotta ask for it. You have to answer to it. Right? So meditate. Get to know yourself. Get comfortable with yourself. And just be you. That's the greatest thing to do. Alright, guys. So thanks for listening. This is the penultimate episode. One more before the end of this season. Thank you all for listening in. I do appreciate each and every one of you. I want to wish you all all the great things in life. I want to wish you all happiness, success, joy, discernment, focus. I want to wish you riches. Not only financial riches, but spiritual riches. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good thing. I don't know. I see what you had to say. I, I, I share my random thoughts with you. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Matt Saints?